welcome back. Uh, here at a different venue. I've travelled across country again to the east coast. Uh, I'm a little bit south of where I was fishing before. I'm probably about 10-15 miles south of Edinburgh and probably about similar distance from Eyemouth which is uh, a bit south from here. So I'm north from Eyemouth. Just off the A1 at a place called Dunbar uh, which is a little fishing village. It used to be a very busy fishing village but it's mostly just pleasure boats now. Back on the beach, target species today, target species is going to be turbot. Uh, I was told by one of my su subscribers that uh, if I wanted a chance of turbot this would be the place. Although they're not very big here I just want to catch one. I think they're a stunning fish and failing that I'll probably catch flounder hopefully. I've just ca cast out, got here just before low tide, scoped out the beach. Not many features on the beach as in sandbars etc. The weather forecast today is supposed to remain bright for the day although it is a little windy. Fortunately the wind's blowing offshore and it is quite strong and there is a little bit of surf as well which is good and hopefully that will bring the fish in a little bit. So like I say, first cast, just cast out and bait I'm fishing today is predominantly frozen black lug and frozen mackerel. Fishing a different, uh, a mixture of different uh, setups. One rod has got the one up one down, uh, the bottom hook's got the plain mackerel and the top hook's got the mackerel and black lug uh, wrap and similar on the little rod I've got two hook flapper, bottom hook, plain mackerel strip and black lug and mackerel wrap. So we'll see how it goes. I'll give you a look round in a little bit. Uh, the forecast for today, like I said, is supposed to remain bright but when I arrived here <coughs> it absolutely chucked it down and uh, the walk from the car was a little bit longer than expected. It looked much closer on Google Maps and I probably walked about a mile and a half from the car across sand dunes, mud and probably about half a mile along the beach from where I came out. So let's see, I'll give you a look round. I'll probably put it on Google Maps as well to show you uh, just so you get a better idea of where I am. So yeah, good to be in a good venue. Uh, sorry, another new venue. It's good to try something different and uh, hopefully the target species will be achieved. If not, I'm just glad to be out. The weather again in Scotland is for me, particularly my fishing sessions is on a weekend. Last week was atrocious. Last weekend was atrocious. Most of the week has been atrocious. Torrential rain uh, and heavy winds. But here today, uh, by the way, it is Saturday the when? 21st, 21st of November. So you get an idea of the time of year. So, stay tuned guys and I'll let you see what gear I'm using as in close up of the bait and obviously when I bring the rods in we'll see what I'm using in terms of rigs. Fingers crossed guys. Hi guys. <laughs> I don't believe this. First cast and an absolute clonker of a flounder. Caught on the plain, uh, plain macro strip and uh, that hook is an arch, is a 1-0 uh, Sakuma circle. Because I was targeting turbot, I thought it might be a better choice of hook for hook up rate, but that is an absolute clonker. I'm going to get a measure on it. I reckon it's close to 40 centimetres. An absolute beauty. Good start. Here's a bait. Macro strip. 
I've actually got a tiny little bit of uh, squid strip on this, probably about half an inch long, and I just uh, use elastic thread, bound that on, and I just find that it keeps the strip on a lot better. Anyway, it worked this time. Get this fish measured up. You're not going to believe this. <laughs> On my walk across through the sand dunes, I've lost my measure. <sighs> anyway, we'll see what size it is on the uh, top of the tackle box and I can measure it when I get home. Almost the length of my tackle box. What an absolute beauty. I'm going to get this guy back. Uh, it would be really good eating. I know it would be a beach caught flounder. It's a really tasty fish. But I want to come here and catch more, so I'm going to let it go. In fact, the first cast out with the two rods, my, my, uh, my gear got swept to the right, must be the way the incoming tide is. I'm definitely going to need a grip lead, I think, although this worked. Yeah, a bit further out, I think. There it goes. Oh, brilliant start. I'll be happy now. Don't need to catch any more. Mate, I'm over the moon with that. Uh, not the target species of turbot, but hey, what a clonking flounder. Gonna get baited up again guys. Uh, sorry about the wind noise, it is blowing a pulley. And get recast out. Maybe try a grip lead on this one. Just to see if it holds bottom a little bit better. Hey guys, just a little bit of an update. Uh, I brought in the second rod after its first cast and had a little little sand dab just a small guy again this was on the uh, plain macro strip but on the small rod I've got the two hook flapper so they're both working both rigs are working uh, both first casts the tights let us say was the last clip I had the tight had just turned and the tight's been on the turn for The tide's been on the turn just under an hour. Uh, the beach, the beach from the water to the shoreline, isn't a big isn't a big distance. So I don't think the tide is going to race in at a great rate of knots. So it's not like I'm going to be pushed with the tide here. And just to let you know the state of the tide, I think at the start of the weekend or Friday, Thursday, Friday, I think it was spring tides. So it's just on the start of the sort of neat tides again. Uh, so not really big tides. An update on the rigs. I just put two grip leads on each of the rods because they were both swept away to the right hand side. Obviously that's the way the, the tide's pushing in. But yeah, good start. Two casts, two fish. See how it goes guys. 
I'll give you a quick look round, uh, like I said. So I don't know if you can make out in the distance there, uh, that's the, the Bass Rock, which is a nature reserve. Uh, just up ahead, there's like an estuary that flows in to the North Sea, and I think that's the, uh, I think that's the River Tyne actually. The River Tyne flows in, uh, and the information I had from the subscriber was fish as close to the, est the estuary side as I possibly could. Then got the sand dunes at the back here, and the car park, or the big car parking area is right at the back. Like I say, it's probably about a mile and a half walk. Further down the beach, you've got Dunbar, and then Dunbar Harbour is just where the rocks are in the distance there. And obviously the North Sea. Very good for cod. Uh, today was a, a toss up between going to the rocks fishing or coming to the beach. Uh, like I say, I really want to catch a turbot and I thought I'll come back to the beach. The way the wind's blowing, it's blowing right into your face there. It's a sort of southwesterly wind. So, beach was a better choice. Not bad beach, like I say, not many features on the beach, not many undulations and sort of troughs or whatnot that I could see at low tide. But hey, the fish are here. We'll see how it goes. So, yeah, that's the update, guys. One lovely flounder, I'd say close to 40 centimetres, and obviously the little sand dab there. He looks quite happy in the bucket. I'll let him rest up a little bit. He wasn't deep hooked again. That was on the uh, the 10 Sakuma Circle, and uh, yeah, doing the trick. Stay tuned, guys. Hi, guys. I'm just uh, I'm in the process of making up some baits just now, and I just thought I would share that with you. Uh, on my first beach fishing episode four or five weeks ago now, uh, I was using a, a rope eye splicing needle to bind my baits on to make wraps. Didn't think it worked as well as it should have, so I came up with something else. And I came up with this. It's basically a three spike uh, baiting tool if you like. It's probably about 22 centimetres long and what I do is got some pre-cut frozen black lug on the middle prong I put the worm the black lug and then because it's got the other two prongs a bit of squared or mackerel or whatever it is you choose to do your wrap just lies nicely on top of the other two prongs get your bait and elastic hold it in place and start wrapping guys uh, if you're a beginner what I would say to you is you don't need to wrap your your bait up like a mummy uh, a little bit of tension, not too tight, just enough to keep it together. And I went over that twice, and like I said, it's not on super tight. The reason that I left one of the spikes longer, uh, which is the middle one that I put, I put the worm bait on, is in general I'll cut the worm bait slightly longer, so when I wrap it, there's just a juicy bit of worm hanging, rather than a sort of dead end, if you like, of fish and worm, or squid and worm. So, a little bit hanging over, and that's a juicy bit that the, the fish is going to take first. Uh, as, I just like to finish that with a little half hitch. 
nip the elastic off and it just slides off guys super easy uh, so yeah I thought I'd share that with you uh, this is just a three the wire itself is I think it's 2.5 mil and it's stainless steel welding rod cut into three lengths and let's see I've kept one length slightly longer and it's just on a bit of dowel, wooden dowel. I think the dowel's probably about just under a centimetre thick. And bound it on with some electric tape. And that's it. It's my new tool. Uh, I used it last, my last session. I didn't manage to get it on camera. And uh, yeah, so perfect little bait. So I'll just crack on, bait some up. Uh, I'm going to fish into darkness, guys. The tide was low tide at half past 12 and high tide tonight is just after 7 so that it's going to get dark probably five, just after 5 o'clock so almost a couple of hours into darkness I'm going to fish into darkness no matter what even if I don't catch any more fish between now and then because <clears throat> sometimes that is the time when fish will come on because it's the first time I've been to this venue I've got to try it, you know, day and night. Just so you guys know, if you ever wanted to come here, that this is the state of the tides that I came at, the time of the day, time of the year. And guys, if I blanked, I would still show this video because the information that I'm giving you, I believe, would sort of, in your mind, say, okay. I'm not going to go to that venue at that time of the year, at that state of tide, etc, etc. So, I think it's worthwhile, you know, it's realistic. Guys, everyone blanks, uh, or everyone has a bad day, and I think it's worth showing uh, the conditions that you're actually in, rather than not put a video up at all, uh, because it's information, like I said. And you can take that information or leave that information. I'm going to check these rods in a minute, get these baits made up, and that'll be enough baits for a few casts. And then I'll do the same again before it gets dark, and it saves me faffing about in the dark making up baits. I've also done some of my, uh, my mackerel and squid wraps. Let's say there's only about half an inch of squid strip on the end and I just think that gives a better presentation uh, it gives a better hook hold when you're hooking the bait rather than all falling to bits and I'd rather use a more streamlined strip rather than a big hunk of ma mackerel which lies on the bottom lifeless at least you know it's going to flutter about in the tide a bit better it's just going to be presented better so that in theory anyway Get these baits made up, and I'll see you in a bit, guys. Hey guys, I've just had a huge slack line. Uh, I'm going to bring it in, see what happens. Hi guys, just a little update. Four casts. Three fish. Another nice flounder.
not as big as the first one, but still a fish. Uh, that was on the big rod again, on the plain mackerel strip, on the size 10 Sukuma Manta Circle. I took the grip lead off the big rod this time and I'm going to let it just bounce about in the tide since I'm casting that slightly further than the small rod which has got a grip lead on it. Uh, second cast with a small rod, nothing on it. But yeah, rain's starting to push over, there's a big squall sort of behind me, it's going to push this way. Again, forecast, it's supposed to be bright sunshine all day. <laughs> what can you do? Anyway, the fishing's good, and it's time to stick it out. So, that circle hook again, very lightly hooked. In fact, it fell off when I was bringing it up, up the beach. So, that's fit to go. I'm going to get that returned and hopefully get another. Hey guys, thought I'd give you an update. <laughs> it is blowing an absolute hoolie and it's chucking it down. The wind must be gusting 40 miles an hour, if not more. The wind was the forecast, the rain wasn't. I'm just getting a bit of shelter here behind my tackle box. Bike detection is virtually impossible. The rod tips are banging in the wind. Uh, at least it's offshore wind. Uh, as long as the fish are biting, I'm staying. Stay tuned guys. <laughs> hey guys, another flounder. Another beauty actually, uh, not as big as the first one again, but another good stamp of fish. Again that was on the 10 Sukuma Mangto circle hook, not deep hooked. Get that in the bucket to rest up. And again that was on just a plain mackerel strip with a tiny little bit of squid which helps me keep the, the bait on a little bit better Hey guys, I'm just going to bring one of my rods in I don't want to leave this but there's a juvenile seal literally 20 feet in the surf right in front of my rods
another nice flounder I had to power that one in through the surf to get by that seal just in case it nabbed it but uh, yeah on the circle hook again not deep hooked and on a plain um, plain mackerel strip of mackerel not bad size about 29 centimetres not a bad stamp of mackerel uh, not a bad stamp of uh, flounder here still no target species turbot maybe as it gets a bit darker they maybe come in yeah five fish and as you can see guys easy unhooking I think these circle hoops may be the way ahead for me put it in the bucket rest it on just in case Plain mackerel, well not plain fully, tiniest bit of squid, like I said about half an inch, just enough to keep it on the hook. We'll just trim this up a bit and pull it back out.
Okay, so that's another nice couple of flounder. That seal obviously knows what it's doing, because all it's doing is just working its way along the surf, probably 20 or 30 feet, 20 or 30 yards in the surf, and he's looking for these, I think. They've got the nice fish. Super pleased, five fish. Let's hope we catch more. <laughs> Just got another two tiny little flounder and not bad flounder. We're doing alright, two and eight here. Uh, luckily, all my snoots can be unclipped, so I'll take two minutes, get this untangled, and get it back out. Get it in the bucket, get them in the bucket, rest them up. Let's get some more. I think that's. Six and seven. The guys got them out, unhooked, took the snoods off. In fact, the little one was on the uh, Sukuma Circle. That fell off before I even got it to the bucket. I'm going to get that back in the bucket anyway. And the bigger one, that was slightly deep hooked, but I got it out anyway. And uh, I'll rest it up. I think there's about four or five in that bucket just now. I caught that on the big rod actually, these two, and I dropped it short. Again, 40 yards. The wind's dropped considerably now, and the surf's dropped a little bit as well, which has made bite detection far easier. Uh, I don't know about you guys, guys that do a bit of beach fishing for flatties or whatever, but what do you, you know, send a comment, what do you prefer to, for bite detection? Do you prefer your rods up high, uh, over the surf, or do you prefer them further back and low? I can never get it right. And like I said, bite detection has been nigh on impossible just now. But the wind's dropped a little bit, but there's still a bit of swell, which is obviously bringing the surf in, and the fish. still got three hours, just under three hours of uh, the flood tide and, the, and I think the fishing's been absolutely amazing up till now. Fingers crossed for a turbo. Doesn't matter what size it is, I'll be chuffed to bits. But if I don't get it guys, I mean, you know, I've had six or seven fish and still three hours of the flood tide to go. Let's see if we can get some more. <coughs> Hi guys, another little flounder. Nothing to write home about, but at least they're still biting. Still got a couple of hours left of the flood tide. Again. This was actually on a black lug and mackerel wrap. Quite deep hook, it's not on the circle hooks, it's just on the uh, size one Aberdeen's bit. I'll get a hook, get it back out, let's get some more. Okay, another baby flounder, even smaller than the last one. And it's been weird really, since darkness fell, which was about an hour ago, I've had two fish on my top hooks all day, I've had fish on my bottom hook apart from the double hook up that I had just before darkness. But the majority of fish have been on the bottom hook and on the Sukuma circles. I'll get this guy unhooked, it's quite deep again, as it's the size 1 Aberdeen's. Maybe get some more. <coughs> hey guys, another fish. 
another little dab, second dab of the day. A bit bigger than the first one. And again, that was on the uh, plain mackerel strip on the Sukuma Manta, uh, Sukuma Circle. And as you can see, <laughs> it just fell off. A little off. Yeah, it just fell off. I think I've lost a couple in the surf actually, bringing them in with the circle hooks. But I'd rather not deep hook them if I can, if I can get away with it. So I'll probably definitely use the uh, circle hooks again. I'll get this rested up anyway, just to make sure it's okay. Got another fish to the count. Just a little update again. The last sort of couple of hours of the flood tide, the tide's really eased off and it's allowed me to go back to the ungripped leads, just a plain bomb lead on one with a big rod, and back to the watch lead on the little rod. I thought the tide would have ran hard the whole the whole flood, but it's not. And to be honest, I would rather not fish with leads where possible, especially with the land target and the turbot. I wouldn't want the turbot to feed, feel much resistance, so I'd rather have a lead bouncing about in the tide, to be honest, if I could get away with it. But yeah, really impressed with the circle hoops. I cast the big rod out this time, probably about 80 yards just to see if there was anything at distance and I've brought it in slowly no bites in it I'll get this one baited up again get the little rod out see what happens hi guys <laughs> just had another double hook up A little flounder was on the black lug and uh, mackerel, lightly hooked. There you go, it's that out. And second fish, another little sand dab. I think it's the biggest dab of the day. Third one. And that's probably the deepest hooked fish of the day with the circle hooks. Maybe not. <laughs> Brilliant. Happy with that. They're not deep hooked, but I'll rest them in the bucket for a little while. And uh, get these back out, guys. Fantastic. Oh, by the way, I've got about an hour. Just under an hour till high tide. The tide's coming in really slow, it's been really good. I've not been chased up the beach today. It's just coming in nice and easy. Uh, let's see, I've got about an hour down anyway till slack tide, high tide. Get this back out, see if we can get some more. Hi guys, just brought the big rod in after that other double hook up and I've got the smallest dab ever. Probably about five inches, six inches long at the most. And this was on the uh, Sukuma Circle again, nice and easy on hooking here. Job done. Get this one back out. I'm not going to belt this out again. I'm just going to drop it short. 40 yards or something. Hi 
Hi guys. <laughs> I thought I was getting mullered by something out there. The bait was getting a bit trashed up, especially uh, in close. I've got a little coley, tiny one, and a uh, little circle boot nailed that one. Get this guy back. guys, another little flounder, just a little guy, 20 odd centimetres I would say, again on the plain mackerel strip, and I've got about half an hour, 40 minutes left to high tide, until high tide, I'll get this unhooked, and get it back out. Let's see if we can get another food. 